Hi there guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to talk to you about how to replace a bent pipe in your central heating system or any particular case where there is a tight space uh, like this one and you need to get in there and solder it. This is copper pipe, so it's solder fittings. Um, in this particular case, I had a piece of wood here fall down onto this little loop that I've got here where a radiator is supposed to be, but I haven't installed it yet and it bent those pipes. So you can see those elbows there are bent. Luckily the whole thing didn't spring a leak, but um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slice out the middles here um, and put a coupling unit in, put an elbow in and uh, replace that bit of the system. But first of all, we've got to drain the system. So I've got myself a bucket and some pliers. I'm gonna go to the lowest point of the system and drain it all out. But I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So I've got these radiators, one here, I've got a loop in here, another loop here where there's supposed to be a radiator, and I've got another one in my bathroom. And um, But the lowest point in the system where you want to drain, in my particular case, is under the sink. So I've got a stopcock here, but that's not as low as this uh, magnetic filter. And it's extremely easy to, to drain the system from this filter because I can just put a bucket straight underneath, unscrew this little bottom piece like that and then turn the tap here and it will just drain into this bucket. So I'm going to do that now and then I'm going to show you what Now I'm lucky here because I've got some compression elbows here so they're actually downward facing already I'm just going to drain them straight into a bucket on both sides um, but if I didn't have these elbows all, I, all you'd have to do is um, take whatever plug you've got off on the end um, and just cut it and just try and catch as much water as possible um, after you drain the system. There won't be as much pressure in the system as there was before because you know you've obviously drained the central heating system. If this isn't the case with a mains water supply, like a tap or something like that, you just want to turn off the stopcock. Um, so I'll show you that under here. Most stopcocks will be situated underneath the sink, but you'll have a, a mains water in supply and you just want to turn it off at this section here, turning it to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So tighten up that stopcock and that will turn off your water supply and then open the tap that's in the system um, just to release the pressure from that um, mains water supply so that it doesn't spray at you when you're cutting the copper. Um, so now I'll just get on with it. When you're doing this guys, make sure that you don't put any too much strain on the um, pipe that's already here or on, on both sides to so just support the pipe when you're undoing it. In this, this case, Lefty Lucy is up, so there we go. Do that there, put it forward, and you can see that this, it's leaking quite a lot. But it's draining out, which is good. Just wait for that to drain. And then we'll go over and do the other side. Get yourself a nice bit of tissue, a few of carpets. Show it up that hole that you just done and drain the other side. And again, left the new seat. And there's more. And there's more. Get that tissue shut that there again. Okay. 
So once you've got that all drained, here's my little secret for you guys. Get yourself a multi-tool with a flat end um, like this, a cut flat cutting end, uh, which cuts metal and wood uh, and uh, plastic. And because copper is such a soft um, material, you can cut through it quite easily, just like aluminium uh, with these. Um, I think these are carbide tips, cut carbide tip cutters. I'll put the link in the description for these particular cutters. Uh, this is also an awesome cutter, link in the description for that. It's a works um, multi-tool with variable speed. And what you do is you just chop it in a convenient position. I'm gonna be chopping mine halfway down here and putting a coupling unit on. And um, I'm doing it there because if you put these joints too close together, you'll have them both melting at the same time when you um, fire it up with this, um, with the propane, propane flame. Um, so I'm going to be cutting mine here, catching all of the water with uh, some kitchen towels and um, getting on with it. So I'll show you that now. While you're doing this guys, make sure you, you uh, hold and support the pipe work as much as possible because it's going to be vibrating um, quite strongly. So just make sure you support it as much as possible so as not to damage any other joints. Uh, and don't push in too heavily, just do it, as light, do it fairly lightly and also as horizontal as possible. Keep your cutter as horizontal as possible while you're doing it. So I'll do this now. spillage of water that's to be expected so you can see the water line is just there at the top and I'm just going to soak that up and uh, and then put the salt heat it up put the solar fitting on clean it up so get yourself a bit of kitchen towel stick that in there and basically soak up this excess water so that when you're doing the soldering, no water gets into the solder joint. And just keep sticking it down there until there's enough, I would say, we're going to go until the water is down to this level here. I'm going to do the same to the other side over here. get some kitchen towel and roll it up into a really thin, um, as thin as you can. And then after you've done that, twist it. And we want to get the water level down in this pipe to about an inch and a half below where it is currently so that the water in the pipe doesn't get into the solder joint when we're doing it. So just stick it down hole as far as you can and let it soak that water up. We'll do that a few times until we see the water levels approximately an inch and a half down. Once that's done, um, you will be able to. See, you can look in here, and you can see that this is not a perfect cut. So there's a bit of jagged edges on the sides here, and on the inside, it's not perfectly smooth. Um, and you don't want to have debris sticking to the inside in bits and areas um, like this. So 
Uh, and, and also in order to get our straight coupling unit on, the solder fitting, this is a, uh, a solder ring fitting, so the solder's already in there, which makes it easier. This is not gonna fit on top of there because of this, these um, rough bits on the outside. So what you gotta do is get yourself some um, silicon carbide um, wet and dry paper. So this works in wet and dry conditions. It's got a latex backing. This is 320 grit, but you can use 240, um, 400. The lower the grits you go, um, the quicker you're gonna be able to do it. I would suggest probably the lowest to go is 180 because you don't want it to be too rough. Um, um, but just roll this up into a kind of straw and then we'll use that on the inside here and just jab it in and out to make sure the inside is nice and smooth on this edge and then on the outside we'll just go around and we'll clean that up as well. So there's the straw. Stick it in the end here. And the aim is just to get the inside edge nice and smooth. Smoothing off all those burrs. So once that's done, you should have a nice smooth outer surface here and a nice smooth top. And also, if you stick your finger, little finger into the inside, it should also be nice and smooth in there. And you can test it by just checking if your soldering fitting fits on. Um, so just push that down should fit on nice and snugly and that clicks in all the way up to the, at the center here so I'm happy with that and I'm just going to basically do exactly the same on the other side and um, and then I'm going to put the elbow on my uh, two bits of copper pipe so it sticks out like that and same on the other side and then I'm going to make sure that it lines up with the radiator and that I'm happy with it and that should be a finished job Don't have to hurt your knees this job, does it? So you've got to lie down sometimes. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Right, I think that's done. Oh, back on the knees. Does help sometimes if you've got a spanner. Shove that in there to get yourself a bit of extra space. Show you what I'm doing. job this but if you gotta do it you gotta do it just get around the back here we can use it in cupping motion there's a good one let's see if that's worked yes it has a little bit more Very nice. A little bit more at the front here. So I'll just finish this off and show you what to do next. So once that's all done and you've got the, the outside and the inside and the top nice and smooth and your coupling units fit onto the tops, um, get yourself some wire wool. 
I've got some plumber's choice wire wool here. And you just want to get this and abrade away the surface to give a nice key for the solders to fit to. So I'll just show you that. So you basically want to just get your wire wool in here and just, and just make this top section shiny and nice and scratched up so that it's got a good key for the solders to stick to. So I'll just do that now. I find that going left and right rather than up and down gives a better connection because it's, um, I just feel that it allows the solder to stick horizontally rather than vert vertically and stops it from running as much. Um, but really I don't think there's any difference, it's just my feeling. So it's getting nice and shiny now. Make sure that you complete your braid as much as you can to get rid of all the discolouring in the copper pipe because you want a nice clean connection. Metal to metal, rather than metal to grit. Also, this wire is sometimes quite flimsy, so it can stick to the copper. You don't want any of that wire to be in your connection. Make sure you give it a little once over before you stick your coupling unit on. So that's getting nice and shiny. So, I'm going to say that that is done. So if you look at that now, that should be the same colour from the front to the back all the way around and I'm going to say that that is done. And I'm going to do the same on the other side over here and I'm going to put some flux on it. So in my particular case, I'm mounting a radiator on a wall and it's a floating radiator so the pipes are coming straight out of the wall like this and so I need to measure and see how high up the wall it's, it's coming out so it's it's approximately 25 centimeters up from the base and I've taken the liberty of getting my radiator putting it upside down sticking the valves on and um, now I just need to measure the distance over here so distance here is 430 so I need I know that I need to make sure that this finishes 25 centimeters up and the final distance between these should be 25 at uh, 430 millimeters so um, there is a little bit of play in radiators it doesn't it's if it comes out at a not completely straight angle the pipe does slightly bend a bit and moves so as long as there's not too much stress on the joint, if it was 400 and uh, say 26 for example, the, the pipe's distance apart, that should be still okay for the, the connection to be good. But I'm going to use some jointing compound on there just to make sure that it doesn't leak afterwards. So uh, on to the next stage. To figure out how much pipe to use, you need to get your two uh, joints. I'm going to be going up straight up and then out of the wall so it can go into the radiator. Um, on the straight coupling unit, the pipes meet exactly in the middle and on the elbow, the pipe stops here and then the centre of the pipe is approximately, let's say, it is approximately one, it is approximately eight millimetres approximately eight millimeters to the center of the pipe. So I want to be eight millimeters less than, I want the top of the pipe to be eight millimeters less than 25 centimeters off the ground. Um, so basically, I'm gonna be measuring up from to here. The straight coupling unit will be flush with the other pipe, meeting butting straight up against the other pipe. Then I want to take off eight millimeters 
tapped on the 25 centimeter point um, to get my straight pipe size for that section. And then when it sticks out the wall, you just want it to be, say, six inches long because we're going to cut it down before it goes into the radiator anyway. So my pipe is nearly exactly 15 centimeters off the ground. So to get to 25 centimeters, all I need to do is add 10 centimeters on and then take off eight millimeters from that. So to get your pipe size, just get your trusty pipe cutter and position it so the blade is, uh, I've got it at 92 millimeters just here because it's eight mil off 10 centimeters and then just clamp that up and start cutting. So you keep rotating it and then tightening it as you go and eventually the thing will pop off. Okay, there's my little straight section of pipe. So then do exactly the same process for the other side. Mine is slightly shorter. Um, and then get yourself some wire wool and clean up these uh, end, end points because they're gonna be soldered onto with these joints. And then get another two pieces to come to stick out the end because they're gonna go into the radiator in my case and clean off those joints as well. So all we do is get some wire wool, wrap it around the end here and just twist it. And that cleans it right up like that. So now what I've got is all my pieces together here. I've got my right hand um, section, straight up section, left hand set, straight up section, the bit that goes out the wall, another bit that goes out the wall got a straight coupling unit for each side to join onto the pipes that are already there and I've got an elbow for each side uh, to turn the corner and so you also want to check in here to see that the solder is good because I've got a, I've got a solder ring fitting just make sure there's enough solder in there because sometimes they make mistakes and they're not good or the solder is missing that one looks a little bit dry but I would say that's good enough and then just get in with the wire wool and actually braid the inside here as well and clean it up because that will make sure that the fitting between both materials is very good and do that for all of the fittings and so once you've done that instead of being shiny like this on the inside it should be a dull color like that and your aim is to get as much dull color as possible uh, because that's where the solder will stick to. So do that for all of these fittings and then we'll move on to putting flux onto the ends of these and um, putting them in position and soldering them up. Once that's done, get yourself a bit of flux, regular soldering flux paste and just wipe that onto the end here. The, point, the points that you're going to be joining. And first I'm going to do the elbows um, on the ground to make sure they're 90 degree angles. So I'll put that elbow on, <laughs> blow it out to make sure there's nothing in there. And put that in there, make sure it's all the way in. You can see there it is. And put the flux on the other one as well. Stick that in there as well. Wipe off the excess with a bit of water, towel, kitchen towel. And then you're going to be surprised, but aluminium foil is a very good insulator against heat. So I'm going to be using aluminium foil for firing it up. So I've just literally raised that joint across off the ground and I'm going to solder it while it's elevated like that. There you go. So 
So I heat it from the back here first. And while it's heating, just heat it very evenly. As soon as you see the solder spurting out, you just want to make sure that you get the heat around the flame around the whole thing before you um, stop touching it and it's a finished job. So you can see it's now spurting out there. So I'm going to go around to the front and underneath. And there we go. That's finished. So you can see the solder has gone all the way around and um, heating it from the back first, waiting for it to melt and going to the front and then just going around the outside like that very quickly and it evenly heats the joint up. So I'm going to do that for the other side. So this is my left hand piece. That will be sticking on, oh it's very hot. <laughs> that will be sticking on like that and then the other one will be sticking on over this side. So as with previously, I'm going to put flux on um, both of the joints. So I'm going to put some flux on the copper pipe that I'm going to be joining. And then also in this particular case, because this is so narrow in here, I'm going to put flux on the inside of the copper um, coupling unit. Just because I can't get in there with my paintbrush all the way around the other side. So I'm going to stick that on. Make sure it's all the way in. And then this is the side that still has flux on it. And that I'm going to stick onto the end here. And that's all the way in now. So just want to make sure that this top bit here. Oh. So I just want to make sure that this top bit here is coming out of the wall at 90 degrees. So that for me is 90. And I've taken um, some aluminium, and because this is all a flammable area, I've wrapped it in around the back and around the sides to make sure that this doesn't set light while I'm doing it. Um, but let's hope it doesn't. But here we go. It's going to get the flame going directly towards this joint. Go under a little bit, over, under. And the solder is now melting. Now I've got both of these in the positions um, they should be. This one is loose, this one's been soldered already. And um, I'm just going to measure, as I did with the valves earlier on the radiator, and make sure that where it connects to the radiator, it's, just, it's the correct um, size. So that is, for me, 430 mil separated. Just move that in slightly. So that should fit onto the radiator just nicely. So once again, here we go with the soldering. top is now done and the bottom is also just finished. So there we go. So there we go guys, that's how you fix a bent pipe, bent copper pipe. 
I'm just going to put this loop back in until I fit the radiator and um, once I've mounted it I'll do another video for that so if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up and, um, and subscribe because I've got lots more videos on how to do internal cladding. I've got birch plywood internal cladding here which I'm going to be varnishing with Osmo wax and, um, and also finishing off this kitchen um, so there's a lot of kitchen installation stuff to, do, to be done so thank you very much for watching um, please subscribe and I'll see you guys soon cheers bye